All right, so you want to get a six pack. Everybody knows you got to get lean to do that, but here's what everybody misses. You got to build your ab muscles. In fact, if you build your ab muscles, you'll see your six pack at higher body fat percentages. In other words, the smartest way to get a six pack is to get lean and build the muscles of your core. Then you can see your abs. I like this. Powerful. I like this tip because <clears throat> I think by now everybody has heard abs are made in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and so everybody and we, has abs. Just yeah, everybody has abs. You just got to reveal it through getting rid of that layer of body fat that you have covering them, and and that's true, right? Like we all, mm-hmm. everyone, regardless if you had never trained them, uh, if you get lean enough, you will see abs. Right. So that that is a fact. But um, I remember when you first started talking about this, and I, I'm a notorious for this, where uh, I've just used the abs are made in the kitchen philosophy and just get shredded and lean and you'll see my abs. But it wasn't until we had linked up and uh, I remember you had written no BS six pack abs and you had really like kept telling me like, listen, dude, like I was the same way. And when I really focus on building my abs, just like I would build my biceps or my quads or anything else. Um, the benefit of that was I could carry my body at a higher body fat percentage, totally. but have my abs have revealed abs. Uh, like that I was two, 3% leaner. And I was like, oh, wow. Okay. That sold me the fact that, because I always know like there's a body fat percentage and it's like, oh, there's where my abs are at. Yep. Mm-hmm. But I never actually went after building my abs like any other muscle. Yeah, I did them, you know, and intermittently. Well, even then probably a lot of, like high reps. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I would enter, that's what I was going to say. I intermittently would put them in my routines. If I did, it was a lot of high reps, super setting, you know, type of training. Never did I approach it like building my legs or any, my chest or anything else where I knew the value of low rep training. And what was really fascinating was I had neglected that so much. And so it responded even better than I would have anticipated. Dude, I, this, this was a, 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 a struggle for me for a while. It was frustrating. Like I would get, you know, I would routinely get down to 10% body fat and, you know, I could see my six pack when I flexed, uh, but when I was relaxed, I couldn't see it. And so I'm like, gosh, do I got to get down to like 7% for that to happen? And I would do it. I'd get myself down to seven or 8% and you could kind of see it. And I remember, uh, reading, uh, some article from Paul check. Everybody, you know, you guys know who Paul is. He's like the godfather of wellness. And Paul, um, physically is known for having this incredibly strong core. And when you see these pictures of him in his forties and fifties, he's got I mean, a really strong core. He's in his sixties now, I think, but in his fifties and sixties, he just had these block abs. And I was like, God, I, you know, I never, I've never tried to build my core muscles. I've always trained them. Like I want them to have a lot of stamina and endurance. Cause that's what I thought. Right. Whereas when I train my biceps or my shoulders or my pecs or my back or my legs, like I would try to get them stronger and I'd, I'd build them and they'd develop. And I knew that when they, when they were developed, like a developed muscular arm looks leaner with body fat on it than a not developed, not muscular arm at the same body fat. I knew that. So I started to train my abs and my core like I was trying to develop the muscles. And what did that look like? Resistance training. You know, I was doing lower reps. I was slowing things down. I was doing sets of eight or 10 high tension. Now, perfect form, of course, if your form is off with your abs, you end up training your your hip flexors. But I started training this way and I started to get strong. I mean, I was doing dragon flags. That's a, that's an exercise oh, yeah. that you see Rocky. Bruce Lee doing. Yeah, <laughs> Rocky four, you know, he did them and Bruce Lee. Let's Lee's be a- honest. That was the real inspiration here. This had nothing to do with programming. It had nothing to do with the science. Yeah, it had yeah. everything to do with, I want to be able to well, do that was the Rocky this, dragon That was the flag. second time I saw that exercise. <laughs> the second time I saw it was Rocky four, the whole montage where he's training. I'm going to blow up your story. I think yeah. this is what, how this really went down. I don't think you were a deep diving in the science. Yeah. I, think you were, I think you were trying to be Rocky and then found a way to support your argument that's what yeah. probably what really yeah. how am i going to explain to the audience, everybody right? yeah. why i'm doing this this yeah. weird exercise <laughs> no there's that scene in the montage where he's doing the dragon flag yeah. and there's also where he's hanging upside down from the rafters yeah. yeah and it's and it's like anyway so the but the first time i saw dragon flags was i think enter the dragon if i'm not mistaken uh with with i was a huge bruce lee fan and so as i was training for i'm like oh my god i'm gonna try that it's really hard it's hard actually you have to be really strong and what happened is my abs started to and when you build your abs you they they stick out more like they, they start to develop like any muscle so you start to get like these almost like these biceps right on your yeah. on your abs and then i had a six pack that was visible without flexing at like 11% that yeah. never would happen like 11% i'd stand relaxed and you know someone would take a picture and be at the beach or something and i'd be like oh my god there's my 
abs. It's because they're developed. I didn't have them. They weren't developed before. They were there. They just weren't developed. And I had to get real lean to get that like six pack look. The, the other inspiration was uh, Carl Weathers. Remember Carl Weathers from mm -hmm. um, uh, Predator and also from the Rocky well, movies? Even, yeah, Rocky, yeah. It's, but in Predator in particular, he's like, uh, you know, he's standing there with that vest and his shirt off. And he's got like these just abs that stuck out. I'm like, I want. I want a six pack you can see when I don't flex. Yeah. And I had to build them uh, to make that happen. Back when our movie stars were jacked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope yeah, we dude. bring that back. Yeah, I know. Hopefully, Hopefully that, that comes yeah, back. Yeah, what's going on? Do you know, uh, for the audience, there's another really good example I feel like today for people that are not uh, old enough to relate to anything you're talking about right now. <laughs> so, yeah. so let me give something for them to relate to. I think really good examples of this are CrossFit athletes. Yeah, because CrossFit athletes do what a great example. They really they all their routines incorporate all kinds of core ab stuff. They have well developed core muscles, and they and you see all the girls, the guys all have, and they can have a higher body fat percentage, and they look relaxed, and they're they're blocked out. And yeah. I think that is an example of programming well, at yeah. strength training your abs right there. Totally. Yeah, I was gonna say something. But I know I'm gonna get immediately roasted for it because like I did go through a stint like when I was uh, body weight training, I got into like Olympic ring. Oh. And I just completely focused on that. Like it was so intense on my abs. Like I remember my core was like, you know, probably the best it ever was, but it was like doing these front levers, back levers, oh, and then like, you know, ball ups and it's just, it was constant and it's constant stress and tension and, uh, you know, that kind of stimulus in the core and abs. It was just like, they're pronounced at that point. Well, there's two myths that permeate. Oh, would you get crap for that? I just thought you guys were going to pile on oh, the, oh, you fat fuck. Oh. You know? <laughs> I, was like, yeah. I was waiting for yeah. him to say yeah. something stupid. I was, was like, like, well, what do you yeah. say that? Well, I'm gonna give you I don't know. I just, I've, I've had abs <laughs> I guess the day the fat jokes have been yeah. rolling a lot lately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was the first thing you said. You still got to get a lean. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's been so long. I, I don't know. It's like. Yeah. Sorry to let you down. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, there's two myths that permeate core training. One of them is a myth that we know to be, most people who work out know to be false, but when it comes to their core, they forget it, right? And that's that high reps burns body fat in the area that you're training, spot reduction, right? You want to get ripped legs, do a million reps, it'll burn body fat from your legs. Like most people now know that's totally false. doesn't work that way. But people still think that with their core, like, oh, I'm going to do a lot of reps because I want to get a lean midsection. It doesn't work that way. Body fat is burned from wherever your body, it's systemic. It's wherever your body wants to burn body fat from. And the, the first place you tend to store body fat tends to be the last place that you lose it. There's nothing you can do about that. So you get lean enough and you get lean enough um, everywhere else. The second myth that permeates core training is why would I want to build my waist bigger? Why would I want a bigger waist? It's not going to happen. Listen, yeah. build your Big core. Myth. Build your obliques, build your abs. Yeah. You're gonna probably add a tenth it looks of so much better. You might add a tenth of an inch to your waist, but you're gonna look leaner. It doesn't even matter. Um, and you see, by the way, you know when this becomes visible and obvious is athletes. You never see athletes with wispy waists. <laughs> yeah. You know, no. like in bodybuilding where they're trying so hard to to make this out. Which bodybuilders are so muscular. Yeah. That it really doesn't even matter how small that they try was the to make. The guy I pointed out and attacked, you know, on the field. Totally, like, oh, wispy waist. I, I remember <laughs> as it, uh, in my twenties, we went uh, to we went to Rome and then we went to France. We went to the Louvre Museum, and we saw all these ancient, you know, sculptures, yeah, both yeah. from They're from all, Greece. They all have those, dude. The, the sculpture of Hercules. I don't remember what it's called, but he's got like a lion skin on his back, oh, and yeah. he's standing there. And I remember this. Stuff, I was into fitness at this time. I was I, managing gyms. And I remember standing there looking at. And there's also David, right? And I remember looking at the statue, and their depiction of strength. Because Hercules, you know, that's the mythological character of, and he has tremendous strength. So obviously, the sculptor is trying to display what that would look like. Mm -hmm. And the only examples they had back then, they didn't have bodybuilding. They didn't have what they had were like gladiators and athletes, and what they saw in those people. And when you look at the depiction of Hercules, what you saw was strong hip muscles, strong glutes, yeah. strong quads. Obliques especially. You didn't see overly developed pecs and biceps, but they were still developed. And then when you looked at his core, and that's what stood out, I looked at his core, I was like, wow, look how well developed his abs and obliques are. And, and of course, when you're an athlete and you want to be strong, like if you have weak abs and core and, and obliques, it doesn't matter how strong your arms and legs are, you're going to get folded in half. I mean, look at that picture right there 
where he's kind of leaning over something and you see his oblique kind of is it bulge out like is it true like i actually heard that like you know how they have like tiny peepees like how they, <laughs> they, they sculpted that like intentionally was, because yeah. it, otherwise they're like barbaric and uh like it was it was for like the noble per, like they uh, thought what? it was aesthetic the intelligent yeah so it's aesthetic to have a small wiener that's what the, what the yeah. sculpture the sculptor's the sculptors who sculpted these athletes and these depictions, it was considered aesthetic to put a small penis on them versus a shut sw- up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No um, way. That's true. No, it's, it's got to be true. Really? I mean, if you look at all the uh, statues, they're very small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 That's. I notice things like that. So. <laughs> <laughs> Just as- <laughs> I mean, is this, is this, can someone fact check this? This is like no, a real. A fact. Yeah. This is a. I That's never. Well I didn't know that. Yeah. I read it and I just was. Like, I just I don't thought know if the that poor was guys. I figured that they had such small peepees, they overcompensated by getting strong and building a lot no, of muscle. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. in, in fact, uh, really. Here you go. To convey oh, that the man was rational and intellectual and in control of his urges. There you go. Now you got to remember that when they would make a sculpture, they were telling a story. Yeah. So if they were depicting a, a sculpture on fertility, if you look at Greek oh, and yeah, Roman sculptural gets, fertility, well, imagine how mad crazy. you are if you're David and you like forever. I, that's what I'm saying. For, like, you'll forever you're be standing there posing, and then it's just like beep, boop, boop. they weren't. Yeah. There was nobody posing. It was the, yeah. it was it wasn't a David that was posing. Oh, the, he didn't pose for that. No, they were just they were just, just some guy. They're no, not basing nobody it off somebody. No, they were probably off of. They got like, at least base. It off I mean, David somebody. is based. They probably off had of, models. Yeah, I mean, David is obviously biblical. Yeah, but they change a lot. The other thing too is if you look at the exaggerate it. Look at the proportions of the hands and feet on David yes, and it doesn't match. But the reason why it doesn't match is you're looking up. So the, the, the sculpture, oh, the sculptor would you'd be looking up. So they, they would make it look good depending on the angle. I didn't know all this. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I assumed that every one of these sculptures, that dude posed naked for the, the no, no. why is that funny to you? I wouldn't so be, that's, Hercules that's how we do it. Right? Yeah. yeah. If you were to have someone uh, yeah. do a nude portrait of no, you sure. right now, you, they would ask you, you to come in. No. Yeah. I did not know that. No. And so when they would, de- when they would do sculptures of fertility, Dylan, you didn't know that either, right? I, I knew it. You knew it? Jesus. Yeah. Are they teach yeah. in school now or what? <laughs> no. <laughs> I didn't know so that. I was going to say, let me finish I this. Class oh, sorry. Too, yeah. Sorry. I'm, so I'm just, I'm like, I didn't know if this. If they're depicting all. sculptures of fertility, you'd have oversized breasts, oversized, yeah. uh, and oversized genitalia because yeah. they're showing fertility. But here they're showing the, you know, the beauty of the body. So are you saying too so that small penis. all these like paintings in like Renaissance times and stuff like that, these aren't like real people posing nude for those fo- those paintings Oftentimes, either? Oftentimes, no. And if they were, they would add things and change things. Interesting. Look at the, look at the ancient sculptures on fertility. They'd have women with big breasts, big hips. So yeah. what? Or it would be a, a phallic symbol. So yeah. what? Okay. So just one with this huge like. So at what point? <laughs> totem pole. At what point in shrug. time did we evolve and decide to start actually having these nude people s- stand in front of classes? I and think they, they paint still them? did that, but they also added artistic uh, changes or what? What's the term? I don't know. Where they would they would change it, right? So they'd have an a- artistic a- modification. Maybe yeah. So like Hercules, you know, I'm, I was based off of like what they saw with athletes. But how do athletes look? When they're when you know that when, that perform well, they tend to look like this, and then the artist would. But I mean, we're speculating. But the point is that these at, during these times, these sculptors did not have pro bodybuilders to look at. Yeah, they didn't even I have know. guys that's that lifted weights. They just had gladiators, athletes, and soldiers. And so, what they always depicted was well, tends to be what they generally would see, which was developed core muscles, not like this tiny V shape with the. You know, look like they wore a squeam or whatever. You yeah, know, type yeah. of deal. So, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I know, I know. Yeah, that's wild. I, I didn't, I didn't know any of that. Yeah. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, I have a free guide that teaches you how to lose fat in three steps. Just three steps that will burn the most amount of body fat and help keep it off. This guide is totally free. We're giving it to everybody right now. If you want it, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Speaking yeah. of fertility and all that stuff, remember I told you guys that um, you know connecting with my fourteen year old. Uh, she's like, I told you guys, she's like, oh, there's a show I, you know, that's, it's hilarious. And I want you guys to watch it with me and it's fun. And, you know, bear with me. I know it's cringy and you won't like it, but whatever. And <laughs> if we watched, we're starting, we're watching it. Right? It's called Love Island. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh God. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 And I told you it was hard for me because it's, it's pretty inappropriate for my 14 year old daughter, but I'm balancing. And she like, wants you there to watch. Correct. With, uh, with, I mean, that's such a hard dynamic as a dad, right? Cause you it's want like, that, but inside like, of you, are like, you're going like, you should not be, well, you can't watch it. Then the other side of you is like, she's, Letting me in. That's right. And yeah. allowing me to. And let me use this. Are you trying to plant little subliminal? Correct. 
uh, I mean, messaging you gotta, in there. Hey, you yeah. got to talk about that because I, this has to be one it's of balancing a, a great challenge for uh, all parents, especially as they get to that age, where you want to have a a strong bond, trust with your kids. And if they invite you into something that you don't like or you're not happy with, how you respond is is crucial to them coming back to you That's ever right. again. Otherwise, right. I because I remember being that kid. I'm sure I tried to do some of that stuff with yeah. my parents. Mom overreacted. Yeah, overreacted. Never okay, I'm going to lie about it now because it's happening and we're doing it. We're talking about it. My friends and I are into it. But now that I know you're that that appalled by it, I just is going to go like, oh, yeah, I'll never do that again. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. No, because I'm like, okay, how do I use how do I use my influence in the most effective way? Because my instinct, not my instinct, my, my knee-jerk reaction, I'll say, was to be like, turning this off and you get no TV and electronics now for a year or something like that, right? Like, we're done. You're not yeah. watching anything ever again. <laughs> but that, you know, that would backfire. I mean, right. she's a good kid. She's a really good kid. She does well in school. Um, you know, typical 14 year old challenges, but great kids. So we're watching it and I'm just like, I mean, the women on there are just, it's all about sex appeal. The dudes are a bunch of douchebags. They have all these games where they're making out with everybody, rate the best oh kisser. And, and then they're yeah. jealous. Cause this is supposed to be my partner. Although they met yesterday yeah. <laughs> and they're making out with everybody, but somehow I'm jealous of you. And so, so what we're doing is we're watching it and Jessica and I are, are like biting our tongues and we're trying to find ways of like, you know, putting things in. So right. it's like, oh, that, you know, that poor girl, she's looking for validation yeah. from all these kisses yeah. Yeah. You know, or whatever. Or I'll say something like, oh, that guy, like, I know he thinks he's acting, you know, he's saying he's cool with the fact that yeah, this girl really deep down inside, made out with a bunch of dudes, yeah. <laughs> but really it's hurting him right now because I think he might like her. You know, I'm trying to be like that. Yeah, yeah. That's actually but, a good move. Oh, it's so hard though, dude. It's a good move. Oh, like, like, like they had, uh, you know, there was one like game where the girls are walking out of, it looked like a private jet and they're doing this super sexy dance and they're scantily clad and I'm just like, so there are parts where I, you know, I'm like, I'm, honey, I got to fast forward this part. This is really uncomfortable. And she's like, okay, so we'll just. Let's go to the end of the game and see who wins or whatever. <laughs> but hey, it's, woo, it's, it's hard. I, I actually think what you're doing is really, yeah. really smart, really effective because you have to know that too, that there's a part of her, especially if she has that relationship bond and trust with her dad, she's watching it. There is a part of her subconsciously that is curious. How does my dad of think course. about yeah. this? Yeah. And by you allowing that space for her to do that, but then simultaneously also being like educating without educating whose dad's is, is helping her learn I, that. Oh, oh, I didn't like, she I'm didn't also know that. getting insight into how my daughter thinks. Right. So there was one game where the people had to go up. So first the girls went up then the guys went up and then they, they told their body count, right? How many people they slept with Yeah. and everybody has to, and then they get uh, like judged on it or rated or Whatever, right? Because so in other words, the girl says what her body count is, and then the guy reveals what he originally said was too much, right? So, oh, my body count was 10, and the guy pulls this thing up and it's like, oh, six is too much or something like that, right? So they're doing this thing. Now, keep in mind, every contestant on there is in their early 20s. So it's not like they've been on earth for a long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, the, and, and so the women go up first, and- you know, one girl's like, oh. 37. Yeah, 30, <laughs> 40. <laughs> wow. And, you know, my daughter's like- At a 20-year-old? Oh, oh, bro. Oh yeah, what, there, there was some of them, some of them were like I don't know or whatever. So, but what you know, a couple of girls were like six, and the guys were like, "Wow, that's it, only six. And then my daughter pipes up. She's like, "She's like twenty two years old, six. She's been with six guys. That's a lot. How oh, do you scary. do? It? You're like, yes. Yeah, I'm not, but I'm trying hard not yeah, to be yeah, like I overdo it. You're yeah. like, that's right, honey. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> I'm just kind of like, yeah. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking the same thing, huh? <laughs> and I tried to do the math. I'm like, wow, six serious relationships. She's 22. Like, how long does she date? You know, I'm trying to do the math with her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. But God, these shows, dude. What the fuck? What a, I know. Yeah, I, you know, I know it's meant to be shocking, and extreme. Experiment. You know, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Katrina watches those. That's, that's like so. I I've talked about like my trash TV or, or whatever that I watch. It's it's my lowest self. Because yeah. then Jessica and I start like talking shit, so you, which okay, also doesn't feel good. So what is it about it? Because we've talked about this before uh -huh. of like there's there's those times like it has to be and I've, I've connected it to it when I'm not feeling my greatest. It's something about <laughs> watching people that are degenerates. Yeah. It yeah, makes me feel better too. about my, yeah. that's why I like, I'm, I'm kidding. I know it's been like this ongoing joke yeah. on the show, like that I used to watch 16 and pregnant when I was sick. 
for some reason, I, uh, you'll never catch me watching that any other time. Yeah. But for some reason, when I'd be laid up in bed, it, I, I would watch that show. And I'm like, the only thing I could think of is like, because I feel so horrible at that moment. I'm like, that's oh, not that bad. I could yeah. be them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I could be in that situation. And so that I think has something to do with like subconsciously, I'm attracted to something like Maybe, that. Maybe, right? Because Jessica and I will comment on this. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll say, okay, this is my lowest self or whatever. Because then you're commenting on like, that person's an idiot. And what do they think? that god they look terrible and then you catch yourself like what am i you know saying or whatever but i'll tell you there's some some bright spots watching that show there you can see some of them struggle with trying to be what they think is cool because something inside of them is telling them that this is this doesn't feel right like there's mm. this couple that obviously like each other like they actually kind of liked each other and they're trying to act cool while the other person is making out with other people. But you can see inside them that like the guy really likes her. And and then my daughter's commenting. She's like, this is sad. I think they really like each other. He seems like he actually might be a good guy. And you know, he's not like, you know, whatever. Yeah. And so, you know, those parts come out, which is kind of good, but yeah, don't watch Love Island. It's just so funny because so they're going to, you know, they're going to select the the most uh, wild and ridiculous people. So like, if Oh, they're strategically, normal, they're strategically yeah. picked. If you're a oh, normal yeah, these are person, you're not going to make it on, no. on the edit. So, no. you know, it's it's kind of like, it's all entertaining. No, they 100% strategically uh, pick these people. I was talking to a, a friend of ours, I remember at the lake house I was at, um, so... Um, the girl who uh, their her, who owns the lake house, she flips these multi million dollar homes, and she's she's got they're going to be on um, I forget what show it is, but they're going to be they're going to come to her uh, oh an actual show yeah yeah she's oh, they, wow. they, she's going to do be on a, a, a one of the sh- one the of the HGTV re- things it's or? like a reality show for like uh, house flipping and things like that yeah. so I forget the name well, of they it they show yeah. the before and after how much they sold yeah yeah before, right uh, and and of course even like in a show like that. They, they know that drama and all that stuff sales. So she's doing it. Her husband is is playing the role of the husband of the house and a different girl is playing his wife when she's the wife. No way. And she's, she's the designer, the person putting the house, and they have- so Her husband's actually pretending to be a husband of somebody else yes. in the house. Yes, and they're the ones picking it all out. I she's wish people design. knew how fake it's these so reality ridiculous. shows are. Oh, they're yeah. so fake. They're, they're scripted. They're so fake. They're, oh, they're, oh they're, totally scripted. They're, they're, you know what it's like? It's like, uh, you ever watch a mockumentary? It's yeah. pretending to be a documentary? Mm. It's no different than that. It's yeah. pre- they're pretending to be reality. Dude, well, remember fake. Ben Zorn was on here, and he was talking about oh, yeah. uh, you know that show, The whatever, Bachelor, Bachelor and, and how the first- like take where everybody's meeting and getting them drunk. They weren't drunk enough. So they had to shoot the same exact thing the next day. Mm-hmm. It, it was like they re hurt. They literally replic- replicated it and did the same exact sequence. So they could have like certain shots from the first but, day to well, meld with the second. The other thing to think about is people that apply for reality shows are actors. They're in the acting space. Well, then there's this that. This is what their agent sent them. Well, to there's do. also that. So there's there's like there's two parts to this, right? So then there's the, the the what the Netflix or the show will will be looking for to try and craft drama. To your point, and then there's a lot of people that are doing it to get their acting career. That's going. what it yeah. is. Yeah, not all of them, but there's a lot of them that that in fact in the like that space, there's a lot of people that will hate on that when they find out when they figure, oh, he's just looking for. You know, they'll ramp their personality up like way yeah. high. Yeah, they're yeah. trying to build uh, themselves a character, and they're trying to get an acting job. What a it's crappy like, way to. Get- so it's like it's fake from the the directors. Yeah. It's fake from the people that are casting them. Like it's like man, it's a whole. It's, it's got to be the worst way to be yeah. famous because at least when you're an actor, and who's worse? We're we're all sucked into watching it. I know. <laughs> I know. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, you're right. What does that say about I us? Know. Yeah. You know, say that you know. so self reflection. Jersey Shore's still doing it, what? dude. Like you see. Oh that? my god, they were a mess. Though. They, they went dude, I was they were such a, a fan when that came out. Yeah, I would. I I thought that was the funniest, yeah. greatest show ever when it oh first came out. And, I, and now my daughter watches it, and I went back and watched it again, and I'm like, oh shit, this is terrible. It is. Well, bad. This is really bad. It is. It is really bad. Yeah. Doug, would you look up? I'm curious. I know Chris Williamson did one of those, and it might have been. I, think the, oh, Love I didn't Island. even I think, know that. Like, I think it is Love Island too. Chris Williamson. That's an English. Uh, it's a British show. reality yeah. re- reality show. Is it? Look at it's Love Island. It popped right up, huh? Is it? Oh, yes. he was. It was Love Island. Oh, wow. And the begin. Hey, bro, the intro to Look Love how Island. How different he looks. Oh, they God. come out and they dance and sing. Oh my god! Now well, he's he did a great job spinning it because he's a really smart. He's very smart, you yeah. know. Yeah, dude. No, Chris. Chris is a very. But well look at the picture of him. He actually used it for. 
elevating his yeah, uh, other... I bet if I wonder how he was on the show if he was douchey. I, I, you know, I want to go I back know, and watch it. Watch. Like how different it was than because we know him, right? I wonder how different. He was on the show. Versus I mean, he's. Share, I've heard him share bits of it, like because uh, I, I I listened to his show quite a bit, and I've heard him share uh, bits of like who he was, and that was a turning point for him in his life. Like he real, watched it. Yeah, yeah. Like he realized. Like I think even going through it, even before he watched it, I think he talks about how like feeling like douchey and being like, "What am I doing? Well, what Why a am good I job. Good job for him." I, I, know. I was I was just gonna just say him and bit, Theo Vaughn too. I can bro, think of those two yeah. at least using it. To oh, that's right. Theo Vaughn was uh, he's real world. Was it real world? Is yeah. that or yeah, yeah, road rules or whatever. one of those? But he's like yeah. a com- you know, he's a comedian. I mean, he was kind of himself anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he. Th- that's the funny part. It's like he's just so wacky and, and left field all the time. Like he was always like that, but then he just learned how to like put that on stage. I mean, bro, he was forget comedy. He was made for podcast. Podcasting. Oh, so his podcast, his stand up is okay. His yeah, podcasting his comedy. Podcast is really where it's at. The yeah. best. Yeah. He's yeah, so good. Yeah, his comedic timing in a in a long form podcast to make the he's like built for and the he way comes across. Media. He comes across like he's not trying. Like, oh shit, did he just say that? Like, that's just how he talks. <laughs> and he's and and you see, I don't know how many you've watched when he's done like really cool ones with like the Tony Robbins and people like that. Like, he's good. He's, he, yeah, he's got a really like very authentic yep. and very Who vulner- was it that he had vulnerable that, side that, to him. Talked about oh, it was the UFC. What's his name? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. he started crying. Yeah, he dude. gave him the space. He gave him the space. Yeah, it yeah, was I like really that. good. Yeah, no, he is. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah. he's really. I was gonna good. say it's it, it would suck to be to be famous for a character that people think is actually your personality. You know, <laughs> bro, what I mean? that happens all the time. Like if you're on a reality show and you're acting like a douchebag on purpose. But then people think it's real. I mean, and then you, that's how you're famous. Is you're yeah. you asshole. are you are pointing yeah, out? I would say definitely more than half, if not a majority, of all super famous Instagram people. Yep. Oh yeah. They yep. f- they 100%. so many of them hacked into the algorithm of how to gain attention yep. Act like around yep. a character that's not even really themselves. Torture and tortured now. I don't care how much money they're making or where what they've accomplished. Terrible. And I've I know several like personal stories of people that and they have to like I know couples that have built their whole thing around their relationship, this that they fighting, divorce, not like don't even like yeah. everything they put on the internet is not even real, and they have to keep that facade up because they've built so many businesses around. That their, has to be the lowest success rate for relationships is like any of them that have done a show together, like and, yeah. and broadcasted <laughs> it to the world, like. How many of those couples have survived? Oh no, I mean, that's barely. A, especially the the like the polyamorous, you know, like we're yeah we're a sexy couple and we totally get along. We love everything, and I'm not jealous at all. <laughs> and then it's like three years later. I like, saw that just happen out to um, what's his name. I, t- I I check in every once in a while with his content. Uh, like he's he's a like patriotic guy and uh, Sean Whalen, him and his wife mm. did like a you know and they're they're divorced now. And that just mm. happened. Like they, like they were, like he blew up and was growing like crazy wow. and doing all, and like putting all that yeah, out got, there. Yeah. And it's man, it's. Did a, you guys hear? I, I didn't have any notes on this, so maybe Doug can find it. Did you guys hear about the swinger Mormon uh, group that were posting on social media and they would all Mormon? Which I'm like, Wait, how did this, yeah, how's that how does this even make sense? Mix. They would get together and they would they anything everything was okay so long as they didn't have sex so i think they did everything else and then it got it blew up because one of them left with another person so then they got the, the, their their wife i think it was her husband divorced them as a result have you did you guys hear about this no no, no. Huh. doug look up the mormon swinger influencers <laughs> i want it was like a, i saw a clip of it and i was like what is going on how does that even make sense you saw it on Instagram so there's or- a hulu docuseries called the secret lives of mormon wives is that it swinging no. sex scandal involving suburban influencer moms in utah that's it that's it i it's think that's the, it right there. secret lives of mormon wives and they made rules around it like uh you know, we're okay. Catchy titles. So yeah. Let's run with it, guys. Hey, you know what? That makes me laugh, dude. When when yeah. people are, try to be like spiritual, and then what they do is they make these rules that make them feel kind of better. well. They they find the line, and then they like <laughs> it's this whole thing with like soaking. I mean, it's all yeah, that. soaking. And then you get you get nature. somebody to come in and just you know push your hips. Somebody for else you. moves you. <laughs> it doesn't count if I don't <laughs> move myself. <laughs> Where there's a will, there's a way, Listen, Sal. it counts. Yeah. <laughs> it's still, actually, yeah. it's worse. Your friend's holding your hips while yeah. you're having sex yeah. with someone. Like, how is that any better? Seven other influencer moms. Yeah, dude. Serious I didn't. I actually, I didn't even know that was a thing. Ethical non-monogamy are becoming more mainstream in Utah. Seriously, positive dating. I, know. So, I like the uh, show description. 
The scandalous world of a group of Mormon mom influencers implodes when they get caught in the midst of a swinging sex scandal that makes international headlines. Now their sisterhood is shook to its core. Faith, friendship, and reputations are all on the what line. What a great, what a great little, that's a, that's a, <laughs> it's a like a romance pitch. novel. What a, hey, I'm watching tonight. Hey, listen, I'm watching tonight. The, 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 the whole polyamorous thing got old, right? So now they're like, how do we make this even more, oh, we're, we're let's Mormon. go in. <laughs> we're also religious. Yeah. Quaker. Yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Quaker. Amish. Quakers with Quaaludes. Yeah. Amish so, sex toys. Yeah. Do you yeah. think, made out of wood. do you yeah. guys think that... <laughs> Hey, you gotta hey, sand them real Doug, good. I hate the time. Sorry, you gotta uh, do this. Okay. Can you Google Amish sex toys? Is that a real thing? <laughs> yeah, you're gonna make me do this. Just do it. Really I highly do doubt this. it. Maybe they're carved out of wood, you know? No. They have to be made by hand. Uh, they, I mean, well crafted. <laughs> yeah, for sure, well crafted. Sand that thing good yeah, because, yeah. you know, you don't want me. Does that exist? <gasps> the, it doesn't. There's maybe. No I, we gotta make bets on that. Amish I, adult stores go franchise? What? Is this no. a real thing? No, no, there isn't. This is we're getting. <laughs> hey, hey, they are. It's wooden. They're wooden sex toys. No way. Wow, that's interesting. No. Why? Yeah, you well, can find anything on the internet, dude. This is insane. Everything what is happening? Yeah, it's insane. what's happening in the world? I was going to ask you guys if you think that. Um, do you think the the influencer thing is uh, a a period of time right now or a trend right now, and then it will go away and become something that people don't like? Or do you think it's here to stay forever and it's going to continue to I grow? Because like you saw that poll where they're asking everybody in the U.S., like the kids, like what they want to grow up to become. Influencer. And it's like 80% or something influencer. And and I thought, um, yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah, it, to me, I felt like this is kind of a fad that like people are finally going to work their way out of. But even like my son is just like, Oh, you know, I saw my my good friend. He like films the gymnastic events and he does all these things to the camera and like and he's just like that's really cool. And I was thinking about you know maybe I could do that. Oh, dad, I'm like no, <laughs> <laughs> that's stupid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have no tolerance. You, you know, know? I, I agree. I don't think it's. I think it's. It's, uh, it's human behavior. Celebrity. Yeah, is always has always I been actually, a part of human history. I even yeah. think that it's going to continue to go so far that the future of television and movies is all influencer based. I, well, I'll, like, I'll instead, add a spin to that. Like, I mean, we're, once we die off, like the people who cared about the uh, 80s actors and the big names and stuff like that, and then now the new generation comes up, they will go watch a movie with their influencer friends. And if you think about that, the power of getting like yeah. five influencers in the same movie is like almost guaranteed the movie, go, even if it's a shit movie, yeah. it's almost guaranteed yeah. that if if you got five influencers that are from different like pockets of people, right? Like you have like a, a car guy, a shoe person, a, right. a you know, a sports millions of followers. Yeah. Yeah. Mil Terrible each have millions acting, of followers. They have a catchphrase. It's like an yeah. easy hack. It's like, just throw them all in a movie. And then they're going to tell their, their fans so, and all their fans are going to at least watch it at least once. So like, there's two parts of things I want to add to that. The first one dude. is celebrity. It's always existed in human history. Humans have always looked at some people and, and quote unquote worship them. That's always existed. Never going to go away. But here's the spin. I think the future is going to be AI celebrities because I think when AI can make characters uh, that are appealing enough, I think they're going to sell more products. They're going to influence people more. And that's what people are going to want to look at. So I think humans in the influencer space will be replaced at some point. That's my that's my strong opinion. I don't. I don't disagree with I that. I think they'll compete with it for sure. They'll yeah. compete. Companies are going to make. Who can make take the best a while, influencer? But yeah. Well, I was just going to say like a, a, an example of like a, the first one I've seen that kind of leaned into that a lot was you guys watch Free Guy, right? Like yeah. That movie. Yeah. 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 So they had like just a whole host of these YouTube influencer guys, and my kids were geeking out. They're like, "Oh, that's whatever the hell his name See? is, guy." See, you know, and, and yeah. whatever the fuck this person. How, how did Free Guy do? That's a great example because because right. it was just it was just like it, it was, was also a good movie though. It was a good movie. It was all right. I mean, you like for it? like kids, it movie. was funny. I thought it was good. I thought it was all right. I mean, it, I mean, it's it, not a cinematic. It hit, yeah, it hit all the <laughs> buttons. You know what I'm saying? Like wild action. It was entertaining. Com you had action and comedy, yeah. and you just like it was smashed for that it all. Generation for yeah, sure. Yeah, I felt yeah. like it felt like that. It felt like a goddamn reel the whole time. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like yeah. that's what it felt like. Just. Yeah. Bunch of reels, Constant, yeah, like, wow. together put together, and it, yeah, so it definitely hooks you in and makes you watch. But like the, a the, well the one, done movie, the like, one no. movie that recently got me to feel better about uh, movies because for a while I was like, man, movies suck. Nobody's making good movies. Yeah. Uh, was Dune 
Dune 2 oh, was really... Dune was the savior of like, yeah, actual Dune, cinematic experience. Dune exactly. 2 was like, awesome. So was Furiosa. I keep trying to tell you guys I to watch it. The Creator was amazing too. Like Which I, one? St I still love that movie. The Creator. I haven't seen that. Yeah, you have. The Creator? The, yeah, The Creator. Oh. Yeah, the one with the kid that's the uh, AI... Uh, that one was so good that if they actually had good actors, it would have been awesome. I know. That was actually that, that a was good storyline. Right. If they actually had good actors in that movie, not to throw shade on the... I mean, I'm sure there was some that were okay. And the visual experience was amazing, too. I actually yeah, because visually it was good. The whole concept was, I thought, interesting. It got me. I'm not really the you big sci-fi guy you guys. I didn't watch yeah. it. Would that be a movie you think that, that would be you, fun to watch in my love, life? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, does she like sci-fi movies? Fuck no! And okay, we just then, then she yeah. Well, to every yeah, yeah, no, she's so not. I can't lie to her. She, she's My wife her. loved it. And she's not like huge. It's just like yeah. It, Katrina watched it with me too. It, it's okay. got a real emotional pool that's like coming. For, it's a good angle because you actually feel like this this draw towards AI more so than the humans because the humans they show all the. Flaws. I mean, Katrina, I watched, do Katrina know hates what this is. Katrina yeah. hates sci-fi and she and she watched it. So this is she, the one where they're trying to save that little robot. Yeah, okay, I watched a little bit of it. Yeah, um, okay. It's kind of a. It's 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 uh. It gets you thinking like like that's a it's an interesting perspective like as far as like there's kind of like a handful of like i don't know narratives around if ai were to like really get this smart what would happen it's it's an it's one that i think that could very well happen that people don't really think about and i thought it was displayed well mm -hmm. but the acting was like okay their actors yeah. were like okay in it yeah. um but great storyline yeah. great visuals unique story oh uh, uh by the way uh, so we when we recorded the the our first episode since you had injured your pec and I was referring to your oh, bruise can we see it on right your bicep. Yeah. yeah, you didn't even know you were bruised. Look at no, that. Because okay, so yeah, I kept yeah. referring to it, and you were like, didn't you were know. brushing it off. I was. So I thought, oh, okay, whatever. I was. You didn't even know. I know. Okay, so did you know that the FD that that red light therapy is FDA registered for pain and healing? Oh wow! I mean, I'm using it. Okay. I'm, oh, yeah. on there. Oh yeah. So oh, I'm, good. I'm doing all the things. So the and let me tell you, I it's like. I don't want to get ahead of myself. So your BPC and the thymus and, and then and the red, red light. light. Yep. Oh, that's the stack. That's a great combo. And, and icing, right? So and I've been icing. So that is, I feel significantly better. It's only been how many days? Four, five days or that's so. It's a right big now? injury. Oh yeah, and I already feel significantly better today than I just did yesterday which, the day before. Which panel do you, are you using the the Go, the Juve Go, or you have the big body one? No, at my house I have the. What's the one that's called? Uh, that it's goes, on the stand. It goes into the yeah. stand. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, what yeah. I have at my house. And so yeah. what you, the big what ones you, here. What are you doing? Twenty minutes on it? Yeah. Yeah. Like that, even like 15, mm -hmm. you know, just every day. Yeah. After I get out of the shower, that's like the move, you know, do you notice a difference in pain right away or is it taking? No, no. It's like one of those things. It's, it's hard to say. Cumulative. That you, the only thing I ever noticed. I mean, the, the data on it's crazy. The thing if you that look I noticed the about the pain? juve that I, that like I can see instantly is my skin. Like I actually feel, yeah, that you could see it that. almost feels like you went like in a light tanning bed for a little bit. Like mm -hmm. I, I have my, I have a glow to my skin. Sounds weird, but I mean, I can see that and I can notice that right away. As far as like the healing recovery properties, it's so hard to like tell if it's, it's all. the Juve Solo 3.0. Yeah. Doug, how much does that one cost on the on their site? 1600 Without our discount? Yes. You yeah. know how much, by the way, do you know how much red light, so people listening, if you try to buy red light therapy online, you got to get the ones that are identical to the ones in studies because there's red light, but it's nothing like the ones in the studies. It's not going to give you the same effects. Juve is using the legit red light. If you get legit, legit red light that has yeah. the same wavelength, concentrated the same wavelength, yeah. it's it is. Uh, I mean, it used to be thousands, five, six, seven thousand dollars, sixteen hundred bucks. So you get the one. great point. I just had a family member that who who bought a red light and they bought it off Amazon, some random place like that. And I, I pulled up their website to, and I forget how they measure the yeah. wavelengths and some of that. But you can you can literally with a couple Google searches compare a juve light the the wavelengths the to, to the ones, ones they use all these popular ones yep. on amazon the ones on and yeah, the one this one that i was comparing to my my family member that bought it that bought it for you know relatively cheap it was on amazon the juve was 32 times stronger and more effective i said you know you have to think about that for a second you gotta use this 30 it, times as long yes so think about that if if you only Dude. need to be in front of the juve for 10 or 15 minutes a day like multiply that if you want the same effect from that you would have to do that 32 times that like that's why you spend that money. That's why you spend a little bit more money on it. Because are you really going to spend 
32 times the amount of time in front of that red light just so you could save a hundred bucks. Like that's not worth it. And like, the one that we just quoted was a long, big panel. They have smaller ones yeah. uh, that are a, a lot less. I like that one. I think it's the the one that I have, like you you get a good enough yep. like shot. I'm, obviously, I love the huge one that we have here. That one's that one's really expensive and I love that one. That's what it hits, we have. Hits have the, the big full, panels. Hits the full body yep. in, in one, one shot. So this one, I, I'm like, I sit down on, on my knees and I, I hit on it and then I like turn around and do it like that. So I I have to like break the body in half because it's not quite uh -huh. it's not quite tall enough to hit my entire body. So yeah, combined with uh, GHKCU for skin, okay, you will see ridiculous like fast. You put GHK on your face, so and we and Tara has their cream or whatever. We're not even supposed to talk about them. But I'm just saying, you put that on the blue one, then you put a red light. <laughs> I mean, within three days. Yeah. It's rem it's like crazy. Well, that's really how red light therapy g was most popular in like the like skincare world more than anything else. That's first. the only place you can get what, it That's before. where people knew. They would, they would cost them 10 grand. It's been, around, it's been around for a long time. Yep. And you would see these like high end, like uh, what do you call it? Esthetician or yes. whatever places. Yep. And they would have this this technology, and that would be part of the like skincare process for people and facials and things like that. And it's so it's been around for a long time. I mean, I remember when we first had them on, I, we were blown away so much by how much research was out to support like mm -hmm. how effective it is. Oh, but, that's crazy. Yeah, no, it's yeah. a staple. In my Are house. you guys? Uh, I'm not watching the Olympics, but just because of the way they open and whatever. So just, it, I'm not going to. I've watched a few. Watch it, but but there's clips everywhere, and I'm sure by the time this airs, everybody's seen this because yes. we record ahead of time. But the pole vaulter yeah. that failed oh. because his because his dick. <laughs> He's so mind. famous now because of it. Did you see my guy? No. Oh, so the guy who did this oh, painting. He did a painting. He did of a it. painting of it. No, he yeah. did it. Yes, he did. Yeah. <laughs> he did a painting of it. You gotta look. I forget his. Uh, I should shot him out. This guy me. is Paul Pollard. Dave Pollard. He he does like old paintings. Same thing, kind of like that. But then. He he did it so like you know the frame of the painting like he's got his nuts over the frame of yeah. it. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> so funny. so I what actually a, what a shitty way. So to I lose. didn't. Dude, I right? saw it because I follow him. I follow the painter, yeah. and it popped up my feet, and I was like, "Why would he paint that?" And then I realized it was going viral. Everybody yes. was sharing the clip. Well, it's oh, it's just so funny, and, and you know that like I don't know if this is true or if it's just like you know how they get you on like uh, you know clickbait stuff, but. Apparently, he was offered like two hundred fifty thousand dollars to shoot a porn because it's so of much course. attention. Yeah, it's there, like there, there's is that the painting too? Happen. Travis Chapman. Yeah, that's him. <laughs> guy? That's my guy. That's my guy. Dude, that's how I saw it first. I was hey, like, you know what? I was like, the why would he paint this? You know what? Like, oh my god, this really happened. Like, okay, you uh, go to the Olympics, bragging rights. Yeah. I mean, just to get the Olympics, you're a badass. Placing, of course, you're a badass. But you, you know, to lose, if I'm going to lose, this is how I want to lose. Yeah, you have that something to I brag mean, about. If I'm, gonna, if I'm going to lose, this is the best way to go or, down. you know, people remember yeah. you for your junk. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know uh, what I mean? Shit, like, my shit wasn't I mean, so my big, junk, I would have gone like You're, you're yeah. older, yeah. you know? And yeah. so, like, oh, you went to the Olympics? What's your now? limiting factor, my junk? <laughs> yeah, I lost. <laughs> Sorry. What do you mean you yeah. lost? It's, you know. Couldn't get the, you know, couldn't get the package over. I got over. everything over. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't get the package over, you know Just, what I'm saying? I couldn't get the other leg over, you know what I mean? Dude, <laughs> it hit the bar and that was, was it. Was this you that had the Eiffel Tower facts about it shrinking and growing? Okay, what? He it, it grows. You know, and Doug, why don't you throw that in the car? I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna support out. Travis because really? I think that's such a cool thing. That, like, that's the shout out. He does these. Yeah, uh, does, oh, yeah. We'll yeah, shot. We'll shot him out today because yeah. that's he does like these iconic pictures. And I just think this will be it's funny to have funny. a collection of his stuff when he does this oh, funny yeah. stuff. Because yeah, you know stuff. this. I don't know if you. I saw yesterday we had guests in here. Everybody always points this because the, uh, the the camera like YouTube they can't see in here. I've got that that famous photo of the girl who's wait. On. Justin does the best impression. What did she do? Oh, I don't even remember. This is so long ago. Yeah, yeah. you. Oh, okay, I can't yeah. remember. No, They're I'm not. telling you. Oh. I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah. that one. <laughs> that motherfucker back there is not real. Oh, yeah. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the one. So he does those. Shout paintings. out Tiffany. Yeah, and he's he did this one, and I did not know that really happened. So yeah, I was I'm not watching the Olympics uh -huh. either, but that was so it cracked funny. me up. Anyway, so you mentioned the Eiffel Tower, so I'll tell you that. So uh, I don't remember. I, I looked it up. It's an old note, Justin, but apparently because it's metal, when it's hot and cold, it shrinks and grows by significant size it's like i don't know how many yeah, inches sense. but it's an, a huge amount that the actually eiffel shrinks. tower yeah do you actually it's made out of metal it so metal contracts yeah. and expands depending on the weather right. right on the temperature so because that's why the, by the way uh railroad tracks you'll notice the metal doesn't meet completely they leave space for the metal to come together when it's hot or 
Interesting. Yeah. So how do they deal with, I mean, everything's bolted down. So that, isn't that an issue? Like, yeah. wouldn't that be a problem? Like it would. Wow. Loosen. It can change by up to six inches. Now consider how big it is. Yeah. Six inches spread out over the whole thing. And they did consider that when they built it. The engineers who built it did consider allowing for that to happen. Yeah. Uh, speaking of tall, by the way, huh. we've all seen the world's tallest man in history, right? You know that old picture of that white what, dude with the 15 glasses? 15 feet or somewhere, 11 no, feet or Jesus what, 11 feet? Uh, no. Yeah, My God. <laughs> no. Oh, bro, there's, there's a, I've been, I've seen the, um, no, the tallest you, you man ever recorded. Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> there's, no, there's a, there's a, look at, yeah, look at that. Look at no, that. Robert no, Robert Wadlow. He's 8'11, eight, 8 foot 11. Oh no! I've seen, dude. There's a, there's Whoa. at the Wax Museum. There's a guy that's taller than. That's Nato. the guy right there. But he was eleven foot tall. Jeez, yeah, eight foot eleven eight, inches. Oh, Bro, like, eight foot eleven is massive. Maybe that's what it is. eleven. The eleven was in the in the eight eleven, <laughs> yeah. not eleven. Yeah, foot eight. yeah I thought I had the other way around. Yeah, for some reason eight I thought foot, it was. That. That's he's the one that's in the Wax 11. Museum, right? There's, yes. a, there's a Wax Museum with him. Yeah, so yeah, he's the big. He's the tallest man ever recorded in history, besides myths and stuff like that. That's pretty much nine feet, dude. Bro, eight foot eleven. Think of the tallest pro basketball player. Yeah. Now think seven, of four. seven four standing next to him would look small. Yeah, I mean, look, that's that's Wimby right here. Seven, yeah, seven four. I think is what I, is. How Maybe crazy is that? Six. I've never. You guys have seen someone seven foot tall in person. It looks weird. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's imagine really someone weird. almost nine feet tall. That's got to look so incredibly strange. I always tell people that that's <laughs> like the, one of the most fascinating things about going to a basketball game and being close to all the players. How big they move? Oh, how fast? Those how move. big they are? Because and when we watched that on TV. You think of people like Steph Curry and these point guards as little guys, yeah. And it's like he's they would stand out. He is bigger than yeah. like eighty plus percent of the population. I mean, what's 90. a six a six three guy is like? So he's taller. I mean, he's every bit as tall or taller than me, and he looks like this tiny guy on the yeah. court. And you think of him as a little dude, he's like How a big the hell ass do man. You guard Shaq. Yeah. yeah, like he's got all the mass and he's like really tall. And then the fact that they can actually do things athletically as well. Because I remember crazy. when we were kids, like there was always that kind of tall, really. Uh, but he was, you know, not back, athletic, not athletic at all. Yeah. I mean, tripping over very his own goofy. feet. Yeah, yeah, very goofy. So when you see these these guys that are seven foot something and they're agile and they're fast, it's scary. And they, it's, yeah, that's crazy. There's Fly a limit physics, and there's a limit too. There's a physics. There's a limit. Uh, on how tall you can get with our structure because at some point the bone doesn't support the weight or the height. Um, and so it starts to be, that's why they become awkward and they can't move. They're in a lot of pain, but that's also- You're great. also, your life expectancy is so low too. That's because like they all or, have- Organs and stuff are like so- like a growth on their pituitary. Yeah, so all these super, super crazy tall people- uh, have, have giantism? Yeah, they had uh, like a tumor or something on the pituitary just squirting out tons of growth hormone their entire life. Nowadays, they'll identify it at a young age and fix the That's problem. That's Tony Robbins. Yeah. That's like Tony Robbins. Yep, Tony yep. Robbins would be like this, right? He would yep. just keep growing probably. But like this guy right here, Robert Wadlow, uh, they didn't identify. I mean, they just let him grow because they didn't have the surgery. 1918 to 1940. So the guy was, he died young yeah. for being so giant. Yeah, only lived, what is that, 30 something years old? Or yeah, dude. Was it like organ failure at that point? Like 19, uh, yeah. Yeah, 32 years, 32 years old. Enlarged heart typically is the, yeah, right? is, is the that's thing. That's what I would think. I mean, that's like, isn't that like all, that's what's, I mean, I think as a kid, you think that you want to be this big, giant football not player, too big, athlete. Not too giant. Well, I mean, like, not that, but I mean, like, yeah. you look at athletes and you think you want to be these big, giant, but they're, I mean, their life expectancy is so low because it's also of, uncomfortable. It's a lot of stress. It's yeah, also yeah, weird. Body. I remember meeting Magic Johnson, and he's not, well, how tall is Magic? Six eight, six six. I think six six. Maybe look him up. Yeah, maybe six, look him up. Six, six, Magic Johnson. Six six. I think I met him because uh, at the time he was he uh, six, a spokesperson for Twenty Four Fitness. So we had this big event. And I won some award or whatever. I got to sit yeah, and hang out with him. Point guard. And he was so giant. And I remember watching him sit in his chair. Oh, six, six nine. nine. Yeah. I, I, he was tall. So I remember watching him sit in his chair. And and then I asked him. I said, "What's it like, like getting into a car?" And He's like, oh yeah. So I mean, think about your car. Like I move my seat all the way back. Yeah. Yeah, he sits in the back seat. Uh, to to put his legs all yeah. the way to get to the yeah. <laughs> steering wheel. You, you ever get a sport? Okay, okay. You got two sports. You're cars. not. You can't even ride in a sports car. I was gonna say yeah, you, you have can. two sports cars. You're six yeah, what three? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, in getting in, you got to like squeeze yeah, yeah. your ass in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine no, me six nine. I have to have special seats in mind. So my head, if I had the standard seats that come in those cars, right. uh, my my head would touch touch the upper roof. Right. So, yeah. And there's some there's some models that you I can't even 
comfortably drive. Mm-hmm. I'm 6'3". Yeah. So yeah, 6'9". You don't even get the experience of all that I stuff. remember shaking his hand too because you know, got, I got introduced to him and I went to shake his hand and he's just like this big ass. <laughs> <laughs> just enveloped my... And I have big hands like, oh my God. I told you guys one of my... I used to have... I, have the, I had this book. I still got it somewhere. I don't know where it's at. Packed away somewhere. I had a, a Michael Jordan book and it was a, like a big like kind of picture book and stuff. And the opening page is a real actual sizes of his hands like this. Oh, so you can wow. like put your hands up against it. And my tips of my hands come to the bottom yeah, of his palm. Yeah. How crazy is that, dude, that he could just engulf my He could slap you from across yeah. the street <laughs> <laughs> real quick. So, you know, what I think is even crazier when you think about the, him and like Sha- Shaq's even bigger. Like uh, for me, like you, when you shoot a basketball, the way you like part of it is the way your hands spread and hold the ball. Like it's like it, it's like equivalent to me, like almost me shooting like a softball. Yeah. You know how hard that is to shoot and something. You get good spin. And, yes. Yeah, that's weird. Your, your hands are that much bigger than like the ball to try and shoot that would be so awkward and huh, difficult. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, do it next time you yeah. pay attention. If you try and shoot a, a standard size basketball, then you go grab like a softball and think of it, see you if know, it's easier for you. You know what else is strange for a lot of everyday people? Maybe not as much for us because we're in the space, but every, you pro bodybuilders, pro bodybuilders in peak size. The first time I saw one was uh, as a uh, I was in my late teens, and I went to a uh, I don't remember where I was, but I I met Nasser El Somebody, who was a one of the biggest bodybuilders at the time. Um, uh, who else did I? Meet? I saw Dorian, and to see muscle on a frame like that looked so crazy to me. It yeah. was insane. Like the average person sees a pro bodybuilder. And they're just like, what, that, that looks weird. I remember the first time I was walking behind Jay Cutler in Vegas. Uh, I was out there. He's, he's, there's this white as so he is. He, that's exactly yeah, that's, what I was going to say. He is literally, that was the exact thing that I thought. I was like, oh, I was walking right behind him and I'm watching him and he's got like a dress shirt on and stuff. And I'm like, dude, he is every bit. He can lay out a side. Yes. Yeah. He's a square. He was yeah, like a, a almost like a, per, like a yeah. perfect square. Like he was like, <laughs> most every, of those guys are pretty short. Yes. They're like 5'9 average, I would say. Is that what the average is? I think the average pro bodybuilder is 5'9. I, I mean, isn't that really what made uh, Arnold so special yeah. was he was like the, one of the first six foot, like true six foot. Rarely do they get, like, are they, when they're that tall, it's hard to like fill out and look you know, the way that you that's why it's, I think that's what people like, cause there's a lot of people that critiqued like, you know, the, the, the Coleman's and the him, and they think that, Oh, this guy was better. But it's like, yeah, well he was five, nine. You have to, you have to give that extra credit to, yeah. to Arnold and Coleman, because not only they look crazy and impressive, but they're also much taller. So to fill yeah. all that space out and still compete with the five, nine little short guy is like crazy. Yeah. I remember we were at, uh, God, what was it? It was a, a world gym and, uh, it was, I think it was Nasser. I want to say, and he was doing a photo shoot and he had a string tank top and he was, you know, they're filming him while he's exercising and we could be there to, you know, walk, work out and watch. And I remember his back, it looked like, like it would look like meat was hanging off. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Off his lats, like off his back. I remember looking at it in yeah. real, in the in real world. And I was like, this just is meat slabs. It just yeah. looks crazy. And he was <laughs> sweating because he every, you know, one little exercise he was starting to sweat. Must be so uncomfortable. Uh, yeah. Even though I tried to get that big, yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> then failed. More irony, right? Constantly the fact that you, you say hard. all that, then there's a part of you that's like driving towards yeah. that. Oh, terrible. Yeah, it's terrible. wild. Anyway, so shout out. Let's give your guy the shout out. Yeah, so, yeah. Travis Chapman. Name? It's Travis Chapman. Okay. Could you look up his IG? I don't know if it is Travis Chapman. Is his IG or not? So, because that's where obviously I, I originally found yeah, him. Yeah, dude. Can I'm, you get I'm, that pole vault? Nah, I don't want that one. No, I do. I told you really? to order it. I do. I want to I want to add to that collection. I think, I mean, one, I want to support. Travis underscore Chapman underscore artist. There, there you go. go. There Check you go. it out. Yep. Zero shoes are some of the best shoes you could wear for everything from walking, running, and especially lifting. I love to lift weights in zero shoes. They're designed to maximize the way your foot contacts the floor. It helps all the way up the kinetic chain, meaning your knees, your hips, your back works better. You get better results as a result of your foot working better in the shoe. They're very comfortable and they look good. Anyway, if you go through our link, zeroshoes.com forward slash mind pump, zero is spelled X-E-R-O, you can enter to win one of five free pairs of zero shoes. They're giving them out all the time. Go check them out. Again, it's zeroshoes.com forward slash mind pump. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Scott from North Carolina. What's up, Scott? Hey, Scott. Scott. How can we help you? Gentlemen, how are you this morning? Very good. We're good. Outstanding. Thanks for taking my call. I'll jump right into it. I am baffled by something that I hear you often talk about, determining a person's ideal weight. Uh, I understand that you know your ideal weight drives how much protein you should have, how what your maintenance calories are. 
you know, if you're cutting, if you're bulking. So if I could, let me give you a little bit of context of my own story. And I'm hoping you guys can help me out. Uh, I am a recovering CrossFit cult member who spent a, a, a decade God bless convinced you. that lifting weights with velocity was the way. Uh, I got so obsessed with CrossFit that I was doing two-a-days. I was doing competitions every year, wow. all while doing a keto diet wow. and these long intermittent fasts from two to five days because <laughs> I needed to be lean and light. Uh, and at the end of the decade, my body basically screamed. If I had a T-shirt, it would say "overtrained, underfed, and constantly injured." <laughs> that, that's what I got out of you know. And and <laughs> so I was though about two years ago introduced to Sal, your book, and this podcast. Uh, God bless her by my sister-in-law Meredith, who has been a, a life-changing event for me. Now at 53 years old, I put on more muscle. And I lift as much as I did when I was in the military, uh, thanks to Anabolic, Prime Pro, and now most recently I have started MAPS 15. I'm benching about 305, squatting 350 or so, and I'm closing in on a 500-pound deadlift, uh, while also keeping my VO2 max is around 46 to 47. Wow. So endurance feels good, and at 53 – you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still kicking ass and taking names, guys. Like Feeling it. really great about that, thanks to the program. So more importantly, or just as importantly, you guys have really taught me about health span. So I've been tracking my food on MyFitnessPal for, I think I just surpassed 4,400 days, over 10 years straight. Wow. I'm hitting my protein targets every day, around 220 grams, which is part of this conversation. I'm a huge fan of Butcher Box, Whole Natural Foods. Sal, you're right, Paleo Valley. It is the greatest tasting protein powder I've yeah. ever had. It's <laughs> it's donuts every morning, but uh, I am organic, non-GMO, super clean. I I am avoiding all processed foods, avoiding sugar. I get seven to eight hours of sleep, making sure I've got my brain FM and I got my aura ring tracking it. I bought a treadmill to get ten thousand steps a day. I mean, I, I work with a functional medicine doc to make sure that all my numbers are good. So everything from resting heart rate to testosterone is absolutely on par. I feel like I'm doing all the right things, but I still have no idea how much I should actually weigh. And the real insanity of it is I've been all over the board. When I was in CrossFit, I dropped all the way down to 205. And at 205, my wife said to me, you look like you're sick. You are you look ill. Uh, I had 7.8% body fat, which I did on the dunk test, but I was scrawny and I could barely bench, you know, 185 pounds. At six foot three, the BMI tells me I should weigh somewhere around 190 pounds. And we all know what, you know, total garbage that is. Yeah. When in the military, I hovered between the 215 and 235 mark. But it was based on training activities. It was based on deployment schedules. It's just it was all over the place. And now I sit somewhere in the 255 to 260 range based on how much water I've had that day with somewhere between my winning scale says 13 to 15 percent body fat. Again, always fluctuating. My goal is to get down to somewhere between 10 and 12 percent body fat and just add more solid bulk still at 53 but at the end of the day, what I'm really still trying to figure out is what is a healthy weight for a tall, big guy? I'm all over the place because wouldn't those numbers then represent how much protein, what would be considered a cut, what would be considered a bulk? Gentlemen, I'm open. Tell yeah. me. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Help a, me out, brothers. Yeah. It's a really good question. Now, what we refer to as target weight, we typically don't say something like ideal weight because – Ideal weight could be uh, what? Like ideal weight for running, ideal weight for powerlifting, ideal weight for longevity, lifestyle. I mean, uh, I mean, it, it could it could vary. I think what you want to look at is um, uh, how do I feel? You, you're taking a lot of tests, so you're doing all the markers. You see that your hormones are good, inflammatory markers probably good. Everything feels good. Yes. So really, you want to weigh that out with quality of life you know, is your quality of life great? And then I wouldn't overthink it um, because you're doing so much. You're tracking so many things. The last thing I think you need to do is, is also worry about where your body weight is at. 
Your body fat percentage is great. Yeah, I think you're. I think you're, yeah, you're actually. It. Yeah, I think you're actually right where you should be. I mean, there's nothing wrong too. By the way, if you were my client, you said, "Yo, Adam, let's let's make a run at ten percent. I want to see. I want to see the abs like this, and I want you have you, and you have a goal like that." And I say, "Sure, let's let's uh -huh. dial it in calorie wise a little bit. Let's get let's get there just to say we did it." But I actually think you're probably hovering right around an incredible weight and body fat percentage for you mm -hmm. for for overall strength performance health kind of the whole the whole sphere as we start to go lower in body fat you might get more shredded looking but will you be as strong you know will you feel as good i i don't know that's a, that would be a good question to ask yeah i mean let me let, just to paint let me paint a scenario for you right so uh let's say somebody came to me and they're like i weigh 200 pounds and um here's all the things i'm doing and as we're talking i notice that all the things that this individual is doing is actually bringing them stress their, their quality of life is not where it could be because they're constantly pushing their body weight to be at a particular number. Yeah. So that would be another thing to, to, to weigh out, right? Is, is quality of life. Like, you know, ideally, could is there a, a, a longevity body weight that would give somebody the best longevity? Yes, but what factors into that is also quality of life. This is why you see studies that show that sometimes things that aren't traditionally, quote unquote, health, un, you know, healthy seem to improve people's health. There may be something else at play, like, you know, drinking a glass of wine might be good for you because you're with friends and it's improving your quality of life. It's helping you relax. Whereas somebody else, it might be uh, masking something and they're using it to kind of run away. So you got to weigh all those things out and then, and then you know, kind of sit, you know, somewhere around there. And, and again, ideal weight could be different depending on what you're looking for. If you feel good, you feel healthy, blood markers, everything looks good. Quality of life is great. Uh, you're, yeah, that's, you're that's fine. the main thing. I mean, if if you feel strong, you feel like, uh, you know, your joints are supported, there's pain-free. Uh, I think the only thing, like, if you're on that trajectory uh, that I would be concerned is if it starts to kind of impede on your sleep and, like, any kind of apnea because of your body mass overall. But other than that, I think, you know, everything else, if it's good, like – Keep going. I also think it's important to point out <clears throat> that there, there's this myth around like uh, that we have this ideal body weight. In fact, I think what it sounds like you've kind of done for the last decade plus of this a little bit up and down. This is very this mirror is very similar to my my health and fitness journey is like, man, I've I've been everywhere from 189, 90 pounds all the way up to 245 and everything in between. And I've been healthy and strong versions of all those yeah. weights. And I actually think it's very healthy for you to kind of move ebb mm -hmm. and flow like that in a reasonable number. Obviously it's not healthy to go from, you know, losing 50 pounds and losing 25 of that muscle or extremely putting on 50 pounds and 50 or 25 of that's fat in, in short periods of time. But this kind of natural season of your life where you're like, Hey, right now I'm, I'm pushing numbers and I'm trying to get stronger. And so, okay, I carry a little bit extra weight. Maybe you go, Oh, you know what? Like I have this uh, run I want to do, or I want to do this bike trip with my buddies and we're going to, I'm going to lean yeah. out a little bit and, and build my cardio endurance and so you drop down 15 pounds and get a little bit lighter like i think you're in a really healthy good place right now with even the ebb and flow of up and down a tiny bit i think based off the season of your life and where in back to sal's point the quality of life uh point is that what is what is important to you right now that's why i, I mean you would be a fun client to have where you know, you got this stuff so dialed in, I, I would have fun with you and just be like, hey, what do you feel like doing in the next two to three months and make it a goal? And I think that's yeah. healthy. You know, I think there's nothing, I don't think there is a set ideal weight for you. It was like, it means, or what would be the ideal weight or set or body fat percentage for your particular goal right now? Because I think everything you're doing is is incredible. Yeah, and, and you know, Thank you. You, you track so many different things, Scott. The, the question I would ask is, are you okay when you stop tracking, are you okay when you go on vacation and you turn everything off or does it cause you stress? If what you're doing, no. is, then you're okay. You know, yeah. if, if yeah. you're doing so much, sometimes it's like, it's, it becomes a stress, right? Yeah. Some where people yeah. become orthorexic with everything, but if you're okay with that, you feel good. Like I wouldn't even, you don't even need to weigh yourself. Uh, who cares what the scale says? Yeah. If you feel good, you know, and funny enough, I, I don't even really care what I weigh. I just wanted it to make sure so think about the numbers. If I'm 220 versus 250, we always talk about one gram of protein per body weight. Yeah. So I'm wondering to myself, am I getting enough protein? Yeah. Am I in a cut versus a bulk? Because my maintenance calories, when I did the dunk test and the DEXA, both of the guys said, yeah, you should be around 2,300 calories a day. 
And I felt like, man, that feels awfully low for a guy yeah, that's my size. But then I don't know if I'm bulking or cutting or if I'm just maintaining. And I would like to put on more bulk simply because, I mean, that's lifetime Kevlar, guys. I mean, <laughs> muscle, as we all know, defeats against dementia and Parkinson's and cancer and all these other things. And my my goal is to not just continue to be an ass-kicking dad. I still work with law enforcement. I still do this all over the country. It's important to me. But eventually, that that grandpa that everybody looks up to because I can rip a door off a tank. I mean, that's what I still want to be until I'm 70, 80, 90, whatever it may be, and continue this longevity and this health span. So I appreciate that. I guess two other points, if I could say, Adam, thanks for your offer to train me. I accept. So we'll talk about that after the call. That's fantastic. Sal, also, I think it was you and, and my wife, who I'm sure will watch this, will never let it go that you actually said I'm overthinking it because she's only been telling me that for 27 years. Now. So thank you for confirming what she has been saying for so long. But guys, I think at the end of the day, I think that's what I'm really trying to do is just understand you know, how do you stay like this? And what are those extra things, you know, to put on extra bulk, to, to try to lower this or that? Just the number itself was really more about the formulas that we talk about, how much protein, how much carbs, you know, the macros, and then uh, everything that, that goes behind it. So, yeah, you're, you, even if you're just trying to build, I mean, 220 grams at 250 pounds of, of body weight, at, you know, at your body fat, that's still enough. Yeah. That's still plenty of protein. Roger um, that. Yeah, yeah and, and, and at that point, when you're eating that much protein, it's like, okay, do I feel like I'm stuffing myself? Does it feel like my digestion's off? Do I feel like I'm constantly pushing myself to eat more, or am I hungry? Those are the questions you want to ask yeah. yourself. And if you feel good, everything feels balanced, it's not stressed, you know, you're not stressed out over all this, you're doing great. I, I even, yeah, I even, feels, feels I, really good. I even think that your desire to to want to solve this like this is still even some of your t old tendencies of wanting to push. It's like I think you are, I think you're, <laughs> I think you're doing great, bro. I think you're like, and and it would be fun, like I said, to hey, let's get shredded for a while, and we go into a calorie deficit and get l really lean, and and know that hey, we'll, we might lose a little bit of strength on the way there, but hey, you got some cool abs for a while, and then you get down there and you go, you know what, I miss ripping 500 pounds off the floor. Let's go back the other way. And I just think that's a really healthy, and then, Hey, let's not even track for the next six months. Let's just eat when you're hungry, make good choices, stay consistent in the gym. Tell me how you feel. Like, I mean, if you were my client and we were kind of going through this journey together, I would be encouraging you to do all those things. I'd be encouraging you to challenge yourself body fat percentage for a little while. Then I'd encourage you to come back the other way. Then I'd encourage you to like, don't even pay attention to anything. And let's just enjoy balance of life. Like, I, I, and you're, by the way, doing that, you're going to get exactly what you want. If you want to be the rip strong, rip the door off a tank, grandpa, you're doing it. You're doing exactly that. And if anything is going to set you back or hurt you is actually to like overthink it, overdo one of those things. Try to push the numbers so hard that you're ignoring signals that it's too much, you know, or cutting so hard that you're not, you're ignoring signals of sleep and other stuff. Like, I think what you're doing is going to give you the goal you want. Yeah. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate that. So one more note, if I could add it. Yep. And guys, I say this with all, all the sincerity I have, the message that you guys bring around in the fitness space and really just in the general you know, population, the importance of physical health, I think is equally matched with what you guys talk about from emotional, mental, and spiritual health. And, um, you know, you help people really, we, you talk about find and move with the purpose. I've shared your podcast with countless friends, my own kids. I don't think what you guys do can be stressed enough. So I applaud all of you gentlemen, all four Thank of you. you for really making a difference. And what I believe is leaving a legacy to eventually millions of people that uh, recovering CrossFitters, as well as veterans and everybody else. Awesome. I think it's it's huge. Thanks. So Thank really, you, really appreciate that. Hey, Thank you so much, Scott. Hell of a compliment, Scott. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much, man. Appreciate that. Roger that, Jim. All right. Cheers, Take guys. Bye-bye. Yeah, cool guy. That dude's going to be a badass. Yeah, grandpa. well, he's doing all right. Yeah. Yeah. He's doing yeah. good. You know, <laughs> he's it's, doing It's the overthinking aspect. Yeah. Right? Oh, totally. Yeah. 100, and, and that's why I made that point about, you know, this is your old CrossFit yeah. tendencies of wanting to push and hit goals yeah. and like that. You're you're killing Tackle it, bro. It yeah. But the whole I, idea. I, I see someone like that at 53. You know, I'm only 42. I That's inspiring to me. Like, I want to sure. be you, guy. <laughs> I'm yeah. on the one sitting on the podcast telling everybody else what to do, but 
I would love to be right there at this age that that kind of muscle, that kind of strength, that those kind of feedback numbers on my testosterone, all my sleep. I mean, the dude is hitting it out the park. Yeah. But the whole, you know, the ideal body weight conversation has to be followed up by for what? Right. You know, it I, depends. Yeah. I know my, I, my ideal body weight for a triathlon would be very different than my yeah. ideal body weight for you know, strength training or my ideal body weight for just longevity, they'd all be different. So when it comes to ideal body weight, it's like what you're looking for. And then it's a feel thing. And quality of life is, you know, that's a very important one. I mean, you could look at somebody and say, hey, you know what? You ride a motorcycle, stop doing that. It's dangerous. You'll definitely live longer if you don't do it. I mean, will they? Obviously, if they don't crash, yeah, but uh, they, they live do, a but, happier life. But yeah, so so it's not it's not an easy conversation. It's it's quite nuanced. Well, you have to balance quality of life with things like longevity and health and all those other things. And sometimes we do things that don't uh, make us necessarily physiologically healthier, but they make us emotionally healthier, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And that's okay too. Well, listen, ideal body weight is followed by desired outcome first. So what is your desired outcome at this period of time, right. at this season of your life? Then there's an answer for ideal probably body weight for you. So to your point, like if right now we're in the season of our life where it's like, hey, you know what? My buddies and I want to challenge ourselves and run for a marathon. I've never done that. We're like That's obviously not something healthy to do all the time and probably his body weight he'll go to, he'll lose some strength, but that's okay. That's not his current goal. His current goal or right. desired outcome is I want to do something like this. Therefore, we're going to get to your ideal body weight and we're, we'll figure that out trying to, to get ready for this, this run. And so I think it's so important to ask yourself, well, what is your current goal? And I think the, I think also there's this, there is this myth around like, there's an ideal body weight for you as an individual. And you kind of try and stay there your whole life. Like, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's healthy to stretch your capacity at both directions. Well, ev evolutionarily, it doesn't make sense to stay at the same body weight all the time. I don't think anybody did. You yeah. know, there were, there were famines, well, there were feasts. All the time. Yeah. So, you know, you, you were heavier sometimes, lighter sometimes. Obviously, like you said, there's a, there's a range. You're not going extreme, but uh, I think staying the same all the time is, I mean, that's okay too, but you're probably up and down a little bit depending on what you want out of your life is, is probably better. Our next caller is Margie from Pennsylvania. Hi, Margie. How can we help you? Hi, guys. Um, first of all, I know that everybody gets on here and thanks you, but I want to um, do the same because you change a lot of lives, including mine. So thank you. Thank you, Margie. You're welcome. Thank um, you. Okay, so I'll just go right into my question. Um, I am 53 years old. For years, I have overtrained. I didn't realize it at the time until I started watching you guys. Um, I lifted and did cardio six days a week, as well as getting approximately 15,000 steps a day, anywhere from 14 to 20. Um, after, starting to listen to, after starting to listen to Mind Pump last March, I dropped the cardio completely, other than walking, hiking, paddleboarding, those kinds of things. Um, and I've been running MAPS programs ever since then. Um, I've run anabolic, strong, anabolic, advanced, aesthetic, in that order. Um, and then I was doing old time strength. Um, I continue to get anywhere from 14 to 18,000 steps a day. I felt my best during anabolic advanced. Um, my stomach was completely flat all day long. I'd wake up, it was flat. I'd go to bed, it was flat. I felt great. Um, since doing aesthetic, I feel as if my stomach's just getting bigger and bigger. I mean, other things getting bigger is okay. Stomach, not so much. Um, and I continue to eat the same thing every day. I'm a creature of habit and I rarely eat anything out of my regular routine. So I'm confused as to what's happening. Um, I'm 5'5", five five, was hovering around 126 pounds. Um, when I was doing anabolic advanced, I got down to about 121 and not dieting. I was eating the exact same thing. Um, so also eating the exact same thing, I got up to about 127, 128 pounds during aesthetic. And um, I didn't understand why. Um, eating around 16, 1700 calories a day, about 157 in protein, 168 carb, 43 fat. Um, so what I don't understand is why am I gaining weight belly fat when I'm not doing anything different as far as, um, you know, my diet, the only thing I was doing was a different program. So I rarely ever get on the scale, but I did only because I was like, what is going on with my belly? So can you help me? 
Yeah. So do you do you know that if do you know for sure that this is body fat and not bloat? Uh, so I just want to start there first. I, w- I would think it's inflammation. Mm-hmm. No, I do not know that. But I guess just you know with the increase on the scale, I just assumed. Well, I didn't assume anything really other than my belly looks bigger. There's a higher number on the scale. I didn't really think bloat. I don't know. Okay. Any changes in in um, digestion? Um, was not going to the bathroom as well. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, so that, that'd be the first place that I would look. The first place I would look would be, are you having digestive issues? Um, because if you notice it in your belly and you, I mean, it could be body fat, but, um, it could also just be bloat or issues with digestion. So that would be one of the first places that I would look. Any changes anywhere else, like sleep, stress, anything like that? Not really. No. Okay. Yeah, the first the first thing I would look at is a digestion. The second thing I would look at would be the the workout programming. Maps aesthetic has a lot of volume, yeah. tremendous amount of volume, and for yeah. most people, it's too much volume, uh, especially if you're following it, uh, following up a, a relatively intense program like Maps Anabolic Ma- uh, Advanced. Maps Anabolic Advanced is lower volume, but it is uh, it is uh, up there in terms of volume and intensity. Aesthetic is near the top when it comes to all that. Typically, when you f- what you would want to follow uh, a program like Anabolic Advance, you'd want to follow it with a, a program that's going to give you a bit of a break with intensity and with volume. So, like Anabolic would have been a good follow up. A nice bridge would have been even Maps Fifteen symmetry, yeah. or Symmetry, and then you could go to a higher vo- volume program. But it's, for most people, aesthetic, especially if you're following up another higher volume or high intensity program is just going to be too much. That can also cause digestive issues, by the way. Mm-hmm. If you're training too much or too hard for your body, um, it can cause issues with digestion. Um, and But I would look there first. I would look at digestion first, see if there's anything you do with your diet that will improve uh, your, your, your elimination or bowel movements. See if that makes a, a difference. Listen, I've had clients that this has happened to before where they uh, feel this way and they swear to me that their diet is exactly the same and everything else, everything's the same. The only difference is this, the, the training that we're doing right now. And it absolutely can be just a systemic inflammation. And that inflammation is going to retain and hold more water. And it's going to make you feel like you've put body fat on. And simply, and that an easy way to test that. So one, you could dive into it. Sal's trying to figure out, you know, parsing out things in the diet. You could also dramatically reduce the training intensity and volume. And if you instantly feel better within a week or two, there's There's your your answer answer, is that you're just too much. The body is, the body's trying to recover and it's at this constant state of inflammation. That constant state of inflammation will also retain and hold water, which will also give that look or feel like you're, you have extra body fat on you, especially if you think all other variables are controlled and the same, that would be the easy way just to test that. And what you may be finding out is that either one, too, too much, too intensive programs back to back is a little too much for you, or that, you know, something more like an anabolic type of programming is more ideal for you. You know, I, 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 do you have MAPS 15? I'd love to throw that to you. That'd be a great thing to transition into right now. No, that is one I don't have. So I'd, I'd love for Doug to throw that to you. And I would, if you were my client, I'd throw you on that for the next couple of weeks. I'd probably take three days off in a row at least. And then I'd go okay. into MAPS 15 and see how you feel. And if you notice an increase in performance right away and you start to notice that the you know the weight comes down a little bit and you're, you don't look like you're... Well, you'll know when your strength... If you get stronger, you know that yeah. you're, you're just... I mean, just to, give you, just to give you some context, Margie, um, if I follow MAPS Aesthetic, and you know I'm a, a little younger than you were, right? About in the same age group, but I'm also on testosterone and peptides, and I've been working out for a long time. Aesthetic is too much volume for me. Like I don't follow that program uh, because it's it's just too much volume. The, the only way I would follow aesthetic would be if I followed up a program like Maps 15, you know, the advanced version. Everything was perfect, and then I'd follow it until I felt like, oh, I'm overdoing it, and then I would I would come off. But it's it's a lot of volume. I mean, that was Adams pro physique competitor routine oh yeah okay yeah and i was great at the beginning but then like with the supersets the last phase i was it's a lot that was rough it's a lot yeah yeah yeah. especially if you're noticing you're not getting stronger and you're feeling kind of worn down and fatigued and what adam's saying is true i mean when you overtrain and inflammation goes up um you'll 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 hold you know inflammation holds water as well and so the weight can change a bit you can even lose muscle 
uh, because of because yeah. of something like that. And it can even affect digestion. All those oh, things does, can be uh, sure. affected by just simply overdoing on the body and you know sometimes too it could it, like sometimes the program could be okay but just in the context of where i'm at in my life you know not getting as good a sleep as i was before you know we get a lot of stress going on at work combined with that much and then i'll just be inflamed i'm holding to i'm holding water and i'm so simply this is why i love and encourage people to have like definitely have MAPS 15 along with some of these other programs they have is so that when you think you notice something like that, easy test is just to transition over into that program for a couple of weeks. And if you see positive benefits from right away, it's almost a clear, clear cut indication of, oh, I was just overdoing yeah. it. I'll tell time. you what too, Mark. I mean, considering all the exercise you're doing, you're, you know, you're following MAPS aesthetic, high volume, you're walking 15, you know, 14 to 18,000 steps a day. And you're averaging about sixteen to seventeen hundred calories a day. Um, I, I'm I'm positive that you're overtraining and under eating. Positive. I mean, well, that was a question too. I wondered about my calories and what you thought about yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, you're still you're still in that space. You know, I, I would go Maps fifteen, do the advanced version, the barbell version, and you can go ahead and keep your calories where they're at. As your strength goes up, increase your calories. So if you start to get stronger, bump your calories a little bit and keep doing that. And here's what will happen. You'll probably get leaner. Yeah, you build muscle. Mm -hmm. Yep. I did. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a member of the private forum and um, I did find a coach um, through the private forum on there that since I sent the question in that I did hire and um, he's been great and, and has said a lot of the same things as far as like upping my calories, um, thought it was too low. Um, shout out to Max Hansen. He's been fantastic. Awesome. So, yeah, so that's a great resource as well. That private forum is fantastic. Um, and he's been very helpful. Thank you. I appreciate that. I just, you know, you question it and you think maybe I should raise my calories, but you're not sure. And I thought, well, let's ask the pros. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would both drop volume and then slowly increase your calories yep. and you'll, you'll know, you'll yeah. know within a week or two. You'll just feel okay. stronger. Yeah, probably within a couple of workouts, you'll feel stronger. And since you're in the oh, forum, really? yeah, yeah, oh yeah, you, you you should know this right away. That's why I said a week or two. Take, like take you, a few days off first, yeah, and then go back and then start working out. By workout three or four, yep, you'll know. You'll be, oh man, I'm I'm feeling strong. Yep, fantastic. All right. Okay. You got Thank it. you so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, All thanks right. for calling in. Yeah, check in with us on the forum, Margie. I want to hear how it goes. We'll do. Okay. Thank you. All right. I got it. Yeah, the 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 trap that fanatics fall into is I'm doing good. I wonder if I could do better. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's How the much trap. More can I squeeze in there? Yeah, yeah. Wait, maybe I do more. Yeah. Maybe I could do more. I'm really enjoying this. Let me do more. And then when and the body things, reacts, and then when things halt, when progress halts, uh, it's a tough pill to swallow. Well, I was feeling good before. I'm, I'm doing all this great stuff. Like, what's going on? And then you just keep at it. You keep at it until. It becomes too obvious. It's well, so, you know, and that was the one factor that she knew that changed. Everything else was pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I mean, it's not necessarily super obvious, but it's pretty much the first place I would go uh, if I was going to manipulate and maybe reduce it again to Adam's point with that. But, you know, that'll be a little more clear. Like, this is really the, what's infusing this response from my from my body. Yeah, I would I would. I would bet my savings on it. The because her she, that many steps. She also remember she was paddle boarding, hiking. Yeah. Oh, she's dude, a, she's over. She's no an way. active no. person. She's an active person. Very few people could could do that many steps, aesthetic, and that low of calories. Yeah, and progress. Right? Yeah, it's just it's just not. Yeah, gonna happen. you're surviving at that point. Yeah. And what's happening is that the body is trying to tell her that and is inflamed, and you're continuing to push through is just sending that louder signal. And so, yeah, just simply. And what's great though is it's an easy test. It's an easy way to to course correct, yeah. but you know this is this happens so much. This is just one at one one level or one end of the spectrum. But be, and I say this all the time on the podcast. It's it's one of the most difficult things to to figure out, balance out, and measure because in everything else in our life, mm -hmm. the more we put into it, the more we get out of it. Just name right. anything else. I know it it sounds seems illogical. Like, it, like yeah, to, well, to it's counterintuitive. Like, why, well, why isn't this working? You just have to re you have to reframe like. It's it's still true. The more you put into it, the more you get out of it. But the more you put into it doesn't mean the more workouts. 
It doesn't mean the, sure. the less calories. Right, right. It could be more it disciplined the, with tracking. Yeah. It could be more disciplined with uh, sleeping better. Like The more self-awareness. Like, know, know yourself. If yeah. you have a tendency to overtrain like I do, you know what it reminds me of? I, I was playing with my with my son last night with one of his radio control cars. You ever notice on the bottom of them, there's a little there's a little knob or a little you know thing that you can you can move to help the car turn more right or left, and you adjust it depending on if you you buy the car you drive it and it tends to veer to the left. Well, you move the thing to the right a little bit to keep it straight. Know your tendency. If you tend to veer towards overtraining, well then that's probably what you're going to do. That's probably what you're we're going to move. So constantly stay ahead of it. Stay ahead of it. Move the other direction. A, a big variable in this also is the, is the calorie and the other movement too. Because if she was maybe eating 2,500 calories and she wasn't doing all this other stepping yeah. and activity, maybe MAPS aesthetic wouldn't be that overdoing yeah. it. But in the context Truth. of low calories, all the other activity and aesthetic, it's just too much. Hey, real quick. Here's the August special. We got two programs on sale, 50% off. MAPS bands, half off. And MAPS 40 plus, that's also 50% off. If you want either one, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code AUGUST50 for that discount. Back to the show. Our next caller is Kara from Iowa. Hi, Kara. How can we help you? Hey, how you guys doing? We're doing good. All right. Awesome. Well, I was on the show in 2022 about um, a failed bulk. I took your advice. I did a bulk. I got over my mindset of, oh, I need to be skinny. Um, And then I tried to cut last year for my wedding. And it was a hot mess, to say the least. I messed up my hormones for some reason. I was having mood swings. I was irritable. My skin was breaking out. Not a great time. So I stopped it, went back into a bulk. And then this year, I decided to try to cut again for summer. I wrote this question a few months back. So I kind of just did a protocol I assumed you guys would suggest. But I'd love to hear what you have to say now about how to go through a cut without messing up your hormones. Yeah, good question. All right, there's a few things that would cause some of the side effects or effects that you noticed with that original cut uh, that you did before your wedding. And, and some of the signs, again, to repeat them, mood swings, irritability, you tend to see digestive issues, you tend to see skin issues. Those are signs that your hormones are a little off. Sleep. And there, there's a few things that, that th- there's a few common offenders with that, okay, with, with especially with young women. One is... Could be you're getting too lean, okay? Uh, Hormones do get negatively affected when body fat percentage drops below a certain point. This is true for both men and women. It's a different number for men than it is for women. But oftentimes, if a woman drops down and gets into the teens, she she can start to notice issues with hormones. The second common offender is just an overaccumulation of stress. This is probably where I point to what happened with you. Getting married is very stressful. Getting ready for your wedding, having people look at you. I'm going to make this huge commitment. Oh my God. And then on top of it, I'm going to do this crazy diet because I need to look a particular way. Breakouts for skin breakouts for weddings are very common. I'm sure you know this, but you know, uh, you, you see women talk about this all the time. And the third one is your essential macros are not high enough protein and fats. Typically, it's fats. So you'll see young women will get on these diets. And they're just not eating enough fat to support the hormones. And then they'll see those hormone imbalances. So if your stress is appropriate, you're not getting too lean. So you're, you're doing everything right. You're not overtraining. You're not undereating. You're getting enough macros. You're doing your, your strength training. Then you, you, you typically don't see those types of issues. So I'd love to hear, though, what you did this time and how you felt this time. Yeah. So this time, so I started at about uh, 2350 calories. That was like my bulk calories. Um, and so I decided, A, I wasn't going to do five days at the gym. So I run Booty by Brett. After you guys had him on the show, I'm like, okay, I can trust him. And I've loved his programming. So um, I do that right now. And I was doing the five days where you do three lifting days. And then two are like kind of body weight and band days. Mm-hmm. So I took out those two body weight band days, just did um, walking on those two days. And then I've always been really big on sleep. I have to get eight hours. I'm very anal about it. I'm weird about sleep and everyone makes fun of me. So I've been doing that. And then I kind of slowly took my calories down just to see how I would react. Cause if I had a bad reaction, I was like, okay, we're bumping them back up. I'm not going to do that. So I went down to about 1900 at first. Once I got comfortable there, kind of stopped seeing results. I went to 1800 and then just recently to 17. I want to get a little more lean, but I don't know if I should drop my calories any farther. I don't feel hungry. Like I feel fine and energetic, 
little sleepy sometimes, but it could just be I'm changing jobs within my company right now. So I'm a little stressed out from that. But yeah, I've been getting results, but I want to be leaner, even though I know my body fat probably is at a point where I don't need to be leaner. Do you know what body fat percentage you're sitting at? Roughly 15, 16. Oh yeah. Yeah. I you're mean, lean. yeah. Uh, so you're, you're starting, you're going to start to, to tap into or, or, do, or, or you're going to start to, you're dipping your toe into the unhealthier body fat percentages. Now the, the leanest that I like to get that I would have female clients get to, and it wasn't common. This isn't common. 15% is very lean Yes, for a woman. It's so it wasn't a common occurrence that I had, but if I did have a female client that was really hardcore, I typically wouldn't get her low, uh, wouldn't let her get below 15. Cause that's, that's almost always when you start to see, uh, hormone issues with estrogen, progesterone, testosterone really starts to plummet. And women with, so I, I think at this point, you're probably better doing a slow reverse diet, which incidentally might actually make you a little leaner initially because of the muscle gain. Um, plus your calories are already 1700. I think that's probably as low as I'd want someone like you who's strength training like you are. So, I mean, you can try and get leaner, but like I said, now you're starting to get into the like, well, now I'm sacrificing health, uh, for, you know, this body fat percentage. And there's ways for you to test that. And then, you know, just don't commit to low calories for a long period of time. Do it for a week or two, mm -hmm. see how you feel. And if you start to see negative effects, get, get back up. If you feel, got, okay. if you feel fine, then, you know, go ahead, stretch it. But you, I mean, a little bit of context too, not that it matters what other people are at. Uh, my, my entire career of managing trainers, my fittest female trainers manage between 15 and 19% body fat. That's just like the fittest of the fit trainers that work for me for a decade. That was like already like the leanest would be 15. Now it doesn't mean they didn't get ready for a show sometimes and get pressed those boundaries, but we know that's unhealthy to maintain that. So you're already in a very lean, healthy place uh, for your size, your age, your weight, everything is in a good place, but doesn't mean you can't test that, but just be, uh, be mindful as you go into that and pay attention to those signs and then reverse back out of it. If you start to notice anything negative from it, that would be my recommendation. What, what are your, what are your big reasons for wanting to get leaner? Uh, do you have any specific, is it just for fun or do you like, you know, I like the way it looks. I want to see what it feels like. I like the way it looks. I feel like I don't look like I work out and I just want people to like know that I work out, like show off my arms and stuff. And then I tend to hold body fat on my stomach and it's something I get self-conscious about. So I kind of wanted to see how lean and fit I can get my stomach. Pretty much the goal is in a few years, I want to be pregnant and have a kid and whatnot. And I want to get like just super fit right now. So then when that does happen, then I'm good to go and I'll like hopefully have a great body afterwards too. Yeah. Do you, If I were to ask your husband and your friends and if I were to ask them, hey, does does it look like Kara works out? What, what would they say? They'd probably say yes because like yeah. some of my coworkers will be like, oh, dang, your triceps pop. And I'm like, dang, thank you. I love that. Or like yeah, things like that. Fair. But obviously in my head, I'm still like, oh, I still want to like be a little stronger, like look like I'm a little bit stronger and leaner and things like that. Well, I'll tell you what'll make you, what'll make you hat, what'll actually make you happy is if you stop, if you work us more on the head part and not so much on the body part, because I don't think it's the body that needs to change. If you're sitting at 15% body fat and you're, you're following structured strength training and I can't see you, but I can kind of see your upper body. You look like you work out just cause I can tell. I try to. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think you're, I think it's the head part that you need to work on because here's, what's going to happen. Uh, Kara, you're going to keep chasing this thing. You'll never find it. Um, as far as being fit and healthy to have a baby, you're actually too lean. Yeah. Uh, even to, to, I mean, lots of women get pregnant at 15% body fat, but ideally you probably want to be closer to 20 if you're trying. So you're already beyond, you're beyond, you know, what you just said, was a big goal for you. And, and to be an object, look, to be quite objective, here's what ends up happening to most women when they go below 15%. They start to sacrifice aesthetics. Okay. That's the truth. Cause what starts to happen is you start to look, your face gets a little more grainy. You start to get a little bit of sunken look. Like there's a certain amount of body fat that makes, uh, objectively that makes women look aesthetic going below that. Then they start to look a little too grainy and shredded. And that's okay. If that's the look you want, um, but I, I think, yeah, it's more about like adju adjusting kind of your perception of yourself. How, or how, how long of a period do you go for when you do these bulks? Um, the last one I did for like seven months or so I did it for oh, okay. quite a while until okay. I was getting real uncomfortable in my skin and I'm like, okay, 
let's see, I built some strength. I hit some numbers that I was chasing after. I got glute gains that I wanted. So I was like, okay, let's kind of shred out, see if we can see all the muscle that we built, which I see it a lot in my shoulders and my glutes, but I felt like I couldn't really see the muscle other places. And that's kind of where I got tripped up at. Yeah, yeah. You know, I honestly, some of this too, um, it, I mean, you're, you're really young. I mean, I, unless you started lifting when you were like 13, you probably, you just, I mean, this is going to get, the more times you do this bulk cut, bulk cut, but it's just going to keep getting better and better. Yeah. You know, like it's, you're, you're going to continue to improve it. Part of this is just being patient. Like yeah. you're doing the right things. Uh, stay healthy. It's okay to stretch the limits a little bit, but be mindful of these signs that your body's giving you feedback that it's too much. Go the other way. And over time, you know, at 23 years old, uh, I mean, you're dude, wait till you're 26 okay. and you've been doing this consistently. Like you're, you're going to you continue your keep, peak yeah, keep yeah. introducing new training protocols too. like, Oh, you know, try like, obviously you've been doing running this program for a certain amount of time you know, now's a good time to jump on something else and introduce a new stimulus too. And your body's going to respond. Car, Kara, what's your height and body weight uh, at 15%? Uh, five, four. Yeah, but I don't know. What I'm five, four. And right now I'm about 133, 135. When I started my cut, I was at like 143. You're about at one, 17 and a half. Wow. So you're five, four, 134, 15% body fat. You've got great lean body mass. Yeah. yeah. So you're incredible. Yeah, I would do, you know what? Do a river. And you've been following Brett's program. I know Brett's programming. It's really good. It's maps anabolics kind of breakdown style with some different like focuses. I would have you go map symmetry and I would do a reverse diet. And I, I think you would blow your mind if you did something like that. Do you have that program? Oh, yeah, I do. I've been tempted to either do symmetry or power lift because I kind of do get obsessed with the strength side of things Ooh, too. Either so one of those would be great. Like, yeah. Either one with a reverse diet. I think you're going to be, you'll, you'll yeah. be really, really mm -hmm. happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'd be great. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. All you right. got it. All right, Kara. Yeah. Good job. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate your time. Yeah. Thanks thank for calling right. in. More, more hardcore people, yeah. you know, <laughs> just not really problems. Just, you know, Hey, just little adjustments. I mean, some of this too is like I said, she's only 23. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. do you remember what your 23 year old physique looks like compared uh, to what it looked like at 30 or yeah. 35? Oh, yeah. I mean, like you just time under the iron, like of, of bulking. Yeah. I think that's what it is, is so many people like you, 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 you run like, let's say a year or two, of like really consistently bulking and cutting. And there's like, where's that cover of a magazine physique? It's yeah. just like, man, it takes time to sculpt this like crazy physique. That people, yeah. But, I mean, also 15% for well, a woman, yeah, exactly. especially with her lean body mass. That's yeah, really very good. Lean, very lean. Yeah. I very bet good. she doesn't just look like she works out. I bet she's. Did Probably we, one of the fittest looking people. Did in we get gym. an Instagram handle too, Doug? I didn't even think it would like look to see. <clears throat> I, that would have been funny. Uh, she has a private she, account. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, okay. She's like super jacked. I mean, <laughs> probably. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it all to myself. Yeah. At that well, body I mean, weight. sometimes we get people like that, right? Yeah. They're like, you know, I feel like yeah. I'm the. I don't even know stuff. if I look like. And then we go on our on their thing and we're like, get out of here. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> like yeah. cover of a magazine. <laughs> it's like searching for compliments. You know what I'm saying? All right. I know you like that episode. If you did, check this one out.